Hello everyone and welcome to Fun FTC's Robot in 30 hour and quick build ranking video. In this video, we took the top 15 teams we could find that created Robot in 30 hours, Robot in 3 days, or just quick build videos. I'm Abhas and today I'm joined by Miriam, Jessica, and Anthony, and as we rank each team out of a total of 20 points. So there are three categories, practicality, performance, and wow factor. Practicality goes up to five points, and it's all about if other teams can take what we saw in the video and build something better or learn from it. Also, they get a little extra points if it's well documented and things like that. Performance goes up to 10 points, and it's all about performance on the field, just how good was it, how fast was it, how much potential does it have, things like that. Wow Factor goes up to 5 points, and it's all about how cool or inspiring the robot was. Every team worked hard to inspire and document their progress, and it was super tough to leave a few teams out. We excluded rankings for supplier starter bots like those from Gobilda, Andymark, and Rev, but did include robots like the Gobilda and Project Peacock collaboration, as well as the Studica Robotics and Cracking Pinion collaboration. With that, let's get into the rankings. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. All right, so in rank number 15, we have team 5741, the Robohawks. They ranked around mid to low twos for all the scores, so 2.3 in practicality, 2.5 in performance, and a flat two for the wow factor. I think some things that this team did really well was showing and documenting the entire build process, so that definitely gave them some practicality points in my eyes. Uh, and then also, I think at the end, they showed their slides, and they were really pretty speedy, so I think that's something a lot of teams teams uh, can look at. Yeah, you can see it right there. I think their claw definitely does need a little work. So that knocked their performance down. And just in general, for me, I typically really want to see a match to to push those performance points up when I'm ranking teams. So the fact that they didn't have one uh, kind of took it down a few points, in my opinion. Miriam, what did you think about the Robohawks? So I think this robot, yeah, like, like you said, it was very smooth. Um, so I think one thing that I noticed is I feel like their wiring could definitely use some protection, um, but that is something that, like, obviously, yes, it's an early season robot. I also like, I think that claw has a lot of potential. Um, I like how it will just, like, quickly grab the samples and place them straight into the, the baskets. So in rank 14, we have team 6547, Cobalt Colts. They scored 8.8 .8 points, uh, 2 for practicality, 4 for, for, for performance, and 2.8 for wow factor. So something I noticed at this robot is it does look a little difficult to control. Sometimes it takes them a few tries to line up for the basket, and then the hang is a little slow. Um, it does require a lot of precision to in, to intake samples. Um, so this robot, I despite what, all the negative stuff I said, I do think it has a lot of potential for later in the season, um, but especially with not being able to do samples, I just don't think it's quite there yet, but definitely has potential. Jessica, what do you think? Yeah, I think one thing I did like was how they included, I think, a differential um, claw design. So you can see that when they go into scoring the buckets and stuff, they have a lot of versatility and flexibility on what angles they're able to score at, which I think is going to be really useful this season in order to you know, cut down those cycle times. Yeah, and just a couple notes I wanted to add on this, because I think I gave this robot a, a few higher points in the performance category. I think this clip specifically definitely shows off the potential for really fast cycles. And I also really like the hang because they pivoted the robot instead of like just pulling it up on slides. And I think that's something a lot of teams could explore this season for a very good uh, level two hang. Now in 13th place, we have team 4116 Volta Robotics. They have an average score of nine points with a practicality score of two, performance score of 3.75, and a wow factor score of 3.25. And 
The first thing that I bet everyone noticed was this double four bar mechanism as a lift instead of you know your typical linear slides, which you can see really provides them with that extra versatility while scoring, which is super useful this season. And it also looks like they have some horizontal extension on their slides, which is provides a little bit of extra reach into both the submersible and to later score in either the buckets or um, on the bars. Yeah, one yeah. thing with this robot that I thought was really cool was the push-up mechanism. I feel like as soon as I saw it, it just you know got a little eyebrow raise for me. I think showing off really neat and innovative mechanisms in Robot 3 Days are always important. And so that's why I rated this robot a little bit higher on the wow factor uh, than perhaps the rest of us. Something... Something I thought would be noted was the double four bar on this robot. Uh, it's been a little while since I've seen one used on an FTC robot. And so seeing this, I think it's really cool and unique. And I also loved the extension um, to go out. It arm was kind of bouncy, which was something to note. Uh, but I would have loved to see more picking up of samples or specimens. But overall, it looks like a solid robot. All right. So at rank number 12, we have team 10 8. 29 Bay Robotics. Uh, their average point overall was 9.4. Uh, they had a practicality of 2, performance of 5.1, and a wow factor of 2.3. Uh, so to start, I thought it was, I liked the bucket idea with how they just scored the specimen, as you could see. Uh, they have a nut locking system with a servo that locks the specimen into place. And I really liked seeing that. Uh, I noticed the claw fingers looked extremely big. It almost looked like they had, they were the foam made of relic recovery blocks. Uh, and this could be an issue, especially if you have a lot of samples in the uh, center. So that could cause some issues. Uh, in the transfer process, I would have liked to see more. Avos, do you have any comments on this? Yeah, I think in general, I definitely agree with all the things you said, but something we're going to see with these higher ranking robots is the performance points go up a little bit. So, you know, they, they rank like right around five for the performance. I, I mostly gave them the performance points for that specimen scoring. I liked how they focused on the specimen more than the sample, uh, which I think is pretty unique for the robot in three days. All right, so in rank 11, we have team 26300 Anomaly. Definitely the biggest and most impressive thing on this robot was the intake. I think servo-driven intakes are going to be very popular this year, and just validating that idea so quickly, I think, was great on their end. Now, talking about the points breakdown, they had 3 in practicality, 3.5 in performance, and 3 in the wow factor. Something that I think contributed to their wow factor a lot for me was just how speedy the robot was in general. I think it was really zipping around the field well, and and that's going to bode uh, really well for them in competition if they can maintain that sort of speed and maneuverability. Miriam, what did you think? So I think that intake was really good. Um, the one thing I want to see is how it does if you have like a bunch of samples in one area, because uh, I think that that might be a tweak point, but it also has a lot of potential there. Uh, we just need to see it. Uh, I think the basket scoring definitely really smooth. I like that, like, you know, there's no transfer, just a simple pass through. So that definitely gives them a lot of potential just to eliminate that point of failure. Overall, I think this is a, a great robot that can definitely do well this season. We hope you're enjoying this video here on FUN. If so, do make sure you click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all FUN YouTube videos and give the video a thumbs up. It really does help. We'd like to thank this show's sponsor, Kettering University, for their support of FUN. Those who are accepting the Kettering University are eligible to achieve up to $5,000 a year in a robotics scholarship. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to get more information about Kettering University and the robotics scholarship. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics to so go attend somewhere that has so many other people like you at kettering.edu slash first. So in rank number 10, we have Shearbrook Rabbitus. Um, so they scored 10 points, two for practicality, 5.5 in performance, and then their wow factor was 2.3. So I think that this robot, you know, their hang, it looks really good. Um, so they definitely have a fast intake. Um, so I like their specimen hanging abilities. Um, so I think one thing is when they intake, I think they could reach a little farther into the submersible. It's unclear from the video if they have that capability, but it's something that like they're going to clear out the part close to them very quickly. Um, Jessica, what do you think? 
Yeah, I think it's really cool that they kind of went for everything that they could achieve with a robot. So, you know, tackling all the areas from scoring to hang as well. Because I know some teams, you know, might be prioritizing one area scoring over the other for their first competitions. But, you know, going for all of them really just creates a solid foundation to innovate later on the season, which I think is just really goes into the spirit of doing these robot in 30 hours and robot in three days. Yeah, and one thing I want to highlight, I, I rated them a little bit higher on performance uh, that, than the average. I think that intake just has a ton of potential for teams. It's very light. It's servo-driven. It's not going to uh, you know, take up a lot of space or anything, and it seemed really effective. So I think we'll see a lot of improvements on that intake, but the core idea is really solid from their end. Yeah, and one of the things that stuck out to me was how large the drivetrain was. It seemed really large compared to some of the other robots that I've seen. Uh, but I think this robot does have a lot of potential. I like the extension. Uh, one of my concerns is that the hooks for climbing could get in the way and could extend out of the field whenever they were grabbing. It looked like they were pretty close to going outside of the field uh, from the viewpoints that we have. But I would like to see this robot more. Okay. In tied for eighth place, we have team 14254, Vivium Night Night. And this design really showcases a lot of simplicity, which I really liked, you know, their analysis in the beginning. And they talked about, you know, how they ended up with having like an active style intake in which they tried a claw design before, but they found the active style intake to be more efficient. They also have a really cool dead axle style arm, um, which looks like also added a lot of efficiency to the robot. So you can see how they did like a lot of small tweaks or optimizations already in the season in order to make their robot more competitive. Um, Anthony, what do you think? Yeah, so when I first saw this, I kind of thought the wheels on the intake were going to be back to back and it was going to come up and in. But when I saw that they grabbed it in the center, that really stood out to me. Uh, I really like how that is. Uh, from what this viewpoint is, it seems like it's belt driven with the servo and that's really unique as you can see here, how they pick that up. That's really unique for what I've seen. And the smaller drivetrain looks nice, and I just think they're going to be a really solid team. Yeah, so building on that a little bit, Anthony, I think I rated them very high on the practicality. This is a really simple robot. It's something a lot of teams can build. And I think especially in their video, they explained a lot of the thought process behind it. So that upped their documentation points just a bit for me. Our second team tied for eighth place is team 8680, Crack and Pinion. Uh, this team had an average practicality score of 2.75, average performance of 5.75, and a wow factor of 2.25. Uh, the arm was really interesting. It kind of seemed, it was really not stable with the fact that they're using the rubber bands to support it, but I liked how they have that. Uh, this active intake is really nice. Uh, it seems that it'll be effective. And I like how they tried to center the weight right around the slide stack. It seems like there isn't much outside of that. Uh, Apost, do you have any other comments on this? Yeah, so first of all, starting with that Sudica drivetrain, definitely interesting to see that. I think teams will be able to see how it performed, evaluate it as an option, uh, you know, if that's something they want to run this season. So really nice of Crack and Pinion to do that. I think I do like the uh, servo intake again. We've seen that cut up gecko wheel be really popular, and I think it's something we'll continue to see being popular this season. And, you know, just running that match and showing like in match performance definitely upped their performance score a bit for me. Overall, I think the biggest room for improvement with this robot is software. Just, you know, a little better automations, control, things like that would definitely improve its usability. Miriam, anything you want to add? Yeah, so I think this robot, it's definitely, like you said, definitely like has a lot of potential. Um, you know, the servo intake, I really like. I think the fact that it's like, you know, we've seen it in a match, it, it definitely did well. Uh, great at scoring in the baskets. Um, yeah, and I mean, I agree, like the software could definitely use a lot of work, but that's, you know, they only had 30 hours. All right, in seventh place, we have a joint robot in 30 hours with team 4115 and 9224. This scored 11 points overall in our ranking with 4.3 for practicality, 4.5 for performance, and 2.3 for that wow factor. This robot was really practical in all of our eyes for a few reasons. 
first they used a lot of standard components. I think one thing, in fact, was that they reused their slides from last year. I think this is something teams can definitely evaluate uh, as an option. Uh, beyond that, I think they had a great idea with their specimen mechanism. You can see it right on the screen about sliding under and then picking it up to put it on and then having really light and small grabbers to kind of hold it while they while they try to deposit it. I also really like the fact that they uh, show how they pick up and deposit the specimen, even if it needed a little bit of adjustment. And it seems like this robot has a lot of potential with that additional intake mechanism uh, seen on the other side of the robot. Miriam, anything you want to add? That the specimen mechanism is definitely really interesting. So I did notice that they like picked up their specimen while hanging on while the specimen was hanging on the field perimeter. So I am interesting. In, 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 is that going to be a strategy that teams are going to use um, as opposed to uh, placing them on the floor? Um, and it's just something interesting that I noticed teams are able to do this season. Yeah, so just talking about that a little, I think it's definitely a great idea because you've already reached like half of the height you need to go, right, for depositing your specimen. So it's just less lift time that you have, even though it's something you can do on the way. Always, you know, doing less work is beneficial in these games. One of the things that set up for me was the fact that their claw on the front uh, could grow down. Uh, it didn't extend far into the submersible, which is something that they said that they were working on in the video. Uh, but I like, and I'm going to add on the specimen, how I think this scoring mechanism is really nice. And it's definitely going to uh, be something for teams that are watching this to note. I think picking up off the wall is something that we're going to see a lot more of. What some of the teams can realize that they can do this if they haven't read the game manual fully. Rank number six, we have the unqualified Quokas. So they scored 11.6 points overall, 3.4 for practicality, 5.3 for performance, and then 3 flat for wow factor. So something that I really like about this robot is that it is an active intake. Um, so with that, the one problem with the active intake is it is large. Um, so I am curious to see like how it performs, like, you know, with four robots in the submersible but it definitely has a lot of potential. I'm not discounting it. Um, and then it also has pivoting slides, which makes it really fast for being able to deposit into the baskets. Jessica, anything to add? Yeah, I think honestly, this robot's intakes is probably one of my favorites of this series. Um, you can see that it just like picks it up with so much ease. And you can also, they also showcase it picking up the game elements in different angles as well, which is really cool and super effective in terms of having an intake that works well. And I also really like their pivoting sides because it really complemented their intake just perfectly. So I'd love to see how much they can optimize this design over the season and also how other teams will work with it as well. Yeah, I loved how much extension they had. Uh, and they had a level two hang uh, if their power wire wasn't dragging. But I like their linear extension, and I love this intake. Uh, it's definitely a very unique one. OK, so in fifth place, we have team 11047, screw it. And overall, they had a score of 12.5 with a pr practicality score of 2.25, performance score of 6.5, and a wow factor of 3.75. So I know this team always makes like super excellent early season robots every single year. And currently, all their subsystems are all super fast with their horizontal and vertical slides. And they also have a really speedy linkage-driven horizontal slide mounted upon their vertical slides as well, which looks super, all looks just super rigid. And I'm guessing we'll see a lot of robots this season with a similar archetype um, once we see, you know, comp competition start rolling around, which is really cool to see that something like this sophisticated has come out this early. Yeah, so I like the claw style pinch intake. I think that's really unique. Uh, but the one downfall that I see of this is that from the video and whatnot, they can only pick up pick it up when it's horizontal. And so I would be curious to see how that would perform when there's a bunch of these samples in the submersible. Uh, but I think this claw pickup is really unique. I love how it works. Uh, and I love the climb and I love how they can score everywhere at this point in time. So they're amazing early season 
robot at this point. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how they would adapt this robot to go for that second or like third stage hang uh, on that high rung. I feel like it could be a little difficult with this robot, but you know everything you guys have said uh, stands very true. Really fast intake, really fast slides, just great robot all around. At rank number four, we have team 20077, the Dubitables. Their overall points were 12.9, their practicality was 3.1, performance was 5.8, and their wow factor was four. I love to see how they could score the specimen on the high bar. Uh, I love to see how they implemented Pedro pathing into their drivetrain. That is something we've experimented with and I think is going to be really interesting to see how teams implement this. Uh, with how this pocketing and this build of the robot is, this reminded me of uh, team 19043 Silas from last year. Uh, but I love the active intake into the bucket it seems to me like it's going to be hard for multiple uh, samples to get into the bucket. Uh, and I think that this is an amazing early season robot, a boss. Yeah, no, I think you brought up a bunch of great points. Two of the things I liked most about this were, A, they showed the transfer. Uh, you know, there was no cherry picking there. They just showed exactly how it works, and it was really, really nice to see that, and I think it's going to inspire a lot of teams. Another thing I really liked with this is how they showed the intaking effectiveness. You know, they had a bunch and a bunch of samples in the submersible zone. You can see how it's really good at getting samples, but you are going to push the rest of them away a little bit. And so figuring out how that's going to work with three other robots in the match is something I think teams really have to take into account. And uh, the Indubitables robot gives some insight into this behavior. Yeah. And one of the things I would really like to see this team do is figure out how they're going to do their ascents. Uh, they don't have an ascent at this point, And so I would be curious to see how they would do that going forward. All right. So starting off our top three is team 10100 Phoenix Force. You can see a pretty big jump in their performance from previous robots, but they scored 15.8 points overall, 4 in the practicality, 7.3 in the performance, and 4.5 in the wow. Focusing on the performance, there are some things I really liked about them. I liked how they were very clear that they were focusing on samples in the high basket. I think having a clear direction always leads to better robots and faster robots. The claw has a decent uh, flexibility in the grabbing, and there's also no risk of possessing multiple specimens or samples so that's really good and I think they really outdid themselves with the software control on the arm especially uh, you know just really smooth all around and also keeping the whole thing in the extension limit even though it could go out uh, based solely on the hardware the fact that they have an auto and can almost hang definitely ups their performance a bit for me Miriam what did you think yeah so I really like this robot I think the claw uh, was really good, um, definitely unique from some of the other ones that we've seen. Um, so I think their software control is really good. Um, it's designed for all the game tasks, so definitely checks all the boxes for me. Jessica, any thoughts? Yeah, I really appreciate, you know, the amount of thought that they put onto the claw in order to make it, you know, more versatile so it could, you know, pick up those uh, game elements in different orientations, which is extremely critical this season to get those really fast cycle times done. And yeah, so the, I mean, like, that's like the big question that arises for teams right now is, oh, do I pick, you know, active or passive? Do I do a pass through or a transfer? So this really does show a really good use of a claw, which a lot of teams should take note of. Yeah, so the one thing for me was uh, with how high the angle and the claw is approaching the uh, samples. I think it was it was kind of spotty. Uh, I love the secondary extension that we just saw there uh, to get hit that uh, high bucket. Uh, and then I like the hang, and I like how it the robot the slides are at the very back of the robot, but when they drive it, it seems really stable. Uh, so I like how. They've done this robot, and I like how they did the experimentation with the Studica uh, robotics chassis and the linear and horizontal extensions. I think that that is going to open the eyes to some of the people uh, who may be wanting to experiment with some of the Studica robotics parts and seeing their options. Thank you to Studica Robotics for their support of this video. If you haven't worked with Studica Robotics structure and motion options for FTC teams, you really have to check out what they have to offer. 
Studica structure is strong, durable, and made of T6 aluminum. And while well, these components are anodized, deburred, and polished, making them smooth and safe and available in a variety of colors. You can order a free sample of their structure right now when you scan the QR code or go to studica.com slash robots. Studica Robotics also has some great motion options like their slide rails that come pre-drilled and with countersink holes. Go to studica.com slash robots or scan the QR code to apply for FTC team grants and receive an exclusive 25% discount on your orders. That's studica.com slash robots. So coming in in rank two, GoBuilda is no stranger to our robot in three days rankings. They've had really neat and awesome robots for the past couple of years. I really like especially how they involve the teams. So now talking about this robot, we can see a pretty big jump in that points rating. They had 16.3 total points with 3.7 in practicality, 8.7 in performance, and 4 in the wow factor. For me, a lot of that wow and performance points came from the fact that they did like a full match and we could see them doing so many different things on the field. The robot was definitely speedy and just like driving around, maneuvering, all of those things. And I was really, really impressed with that uh, pitching lift and how they could move it so quickly and uh, just very smoothly, honestly. Also, the servo intake, just really excellent. I think we're going to see a lot of teams running that this year, and, and they really showed how versatile it can be. Jessica, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think their intake's really cool in that they can just drive over the game elements really easily, and it just instantly picks it up, um, ready to score. Um, I also you know really appreciated them you know running a match so you could see how the robots sort of interact with each other during competition and also just scoring with that human player station as well uh, i thought this was really cool um anthony do you have anything to add yeah so uh my rankings for this team was high this is also my personal team um but for me the reason why it was so high was because uh it can climb level two as we'll see uh they were going for a level three hang uh, and they were extremely close, but they couldn't get the bottom of the mechanum wheel up, and they just ran out of time with this being a total of 15 hours span over three days. I think this is amazing. Uh, they scored a total of 136 points with this Go Build a Starter robot. Uh, with the high and low bucket scoring, they can hit 8 to 12 cycles. Uh, they have the options for the specimen scoring, just like the Go Build a Starter robot that is on the field that's been scoring three specimens. but uh, they just didn't do that because that's what the other robot was extremely good at. Uh, and you'll see the level two hang. Uh, but then they missed it in this point, uh, but they hit it later on. And so I think this is a really, this is going to be an early good mid-season robot that's going to do some really good scoring. Uh, Miriam? Yeah, so I think this robot, yeah, definitely has a lot of potential. I, I do like the intake. One thing I want to point out with intakes is we've noticed that like there have been a lot of active intakes and claw intakes this season, and I'm I'm actually not convinced that it actually matters which team which which one teams choose to go for. I actually think this game was designed for either to work. Um so yeah, this is a great example of an active intake. Um really good. Just drive right into the sample, intake it, and then it's right at um dropping into the baskets. I think that the some like you know some computer vision could be very beneficial to this robot in terms of being able to to like always pick up the correct colored sample automatically but yeah overall great early season robot so just one last thing to add miriam on your point about the active intake if you compare the submersible zone uh from the end of the match right here to the beginning of that match you can see that it looks very very different right like in the beginning of the match the samples are very evenly spread out throughout that zone and like uh right here go build and project peacock they only did a few cycles in that sub zone but still the samples get displaced like so much so i'm really interested to see what that looks like with four teams all going for that submersible zone so we'll just see how that evolves throughout the season but yeah overall fantastic job by this team one of the things I think that this team uh, that might that Project Peacock could have really improved on that they didn't spend a lot of time on was their um, their button layout for driving. Uh, they had every function on a different button, and that really slowed them down. Uh, and so, if we kind of, whenever we can start doing spending more time with this, uh, doing some of our toggles like we always do to just 
kind of whenever we stop intaking to go up to where we can bring it out of the submersible and things like that to just speed it up even more. All right, in rank number one for hour into the deep robot in 30 hours, robot three days ranking is team robot in 30 hours. They are just absolutely excellent every single year, and this year is no exception. They had 17.3 points total, just barely uh, edging out over the Go Builder robot. They had 3.3 in practicality, 9 in performance, and 5s across the board from our hosts in that wow factor. There is just so much to talk about with this team. Uh, the robot is just overall very, very effective. I do think they cherry picked the intake clips a little bit, so that's why I knocked them one point in the performance. But other than that, I mean, the lift is really fast. They show the advantage of that horizontal extending intake. And I think that transfer that they showed is just really, really excellent. Something that you could see on teams robots for the entire season, even up to Worlds. Um, Anthony, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I really like this robot. Uh, I loved the intake uh, with the motor and the round belt on it. Uh, I thought it was really cool that once it had the sample, it kind of kept spinning just to like hold it in place. Uh, and I thought the interesting thing to note is on the bucket that they score for the high, there's a cutout for their uh, active intake system. So it just can go right up and it doesn't need to fall down or anything like that. Um, and in this four times speed, I believe they hit six high basket cycles uh, and their level two hang was something that I really liked about this robot. Jessica? Yeah, um, this is a really, really impressive robot, especially for, you know, the time that they spent um, working on it. Um, I especially liked, you know, the transfer because it just made it seem, you know, so simple and easy to just seamlessly move the game element from the intake to the scoring mechanism. Yeah, you can see it right here. It's just so seamless. That's definitely my favorite part about this robot. Um, Miriam, what do you think? Yeah, so I think like this intake and transfer are really smooth. The, you know, the intake is quick, at least in the clips that they show. Uh, super smooth transfer, and then I like how like when they score on the baskets, they can just like lift up and just dump it in. That just you know makes everything super fast. I like their specimen scoring. Uh, their hang is pretty good, um, and I think it just yeah, overall just really good robot. Um, yeah, I mean they got rank one. Um, yeah, I think one thing that I always enjoy with the uh, Team Robot in 30 Hours reveals is how they decide to put together the field because they, they never have like the actual field. Uh, and so it's really interesting seeing like what they cobble together and make substitutions for in order to like actually be able to play the game and, and show how they perform. So I think they did another great job with that this year. Just all around really excellent. And one of the things that I would like to note that I just saw was they have the bar for the samples, so if they overshoot it, uh, they can bring it back to them, and it just folds it right up into that active intake. So that's going to help, especially with the samples being uh, not consistent inside the submersible. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that works with uh, the all the samples and the three other teams on the field. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought of the rankings in the comments. Who did you have higher or lower? Don't forget to subscribe to Fun to stay up to date on all Fun FTC videos. We have a lot of great content planned for this season, so be sure to check it out soon. Thank you. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.